stranded British fighter jet on an airfield far away. There's a risk its state-of-the-art and highly sensitive technology could become compromised, falling into the hands of an enemy state. Thousands of miles away, at an airbase in North Yorkshire, the RAF's cyber experts must come up with a plan, provide the comm security that will allow the jet to be recovered. It's high stakes with more than just the reputation of the UK armed forces on the line. This is the work of 90 Signals Unit, and they're busier than ever. 90 Signals Unit, or 90SU for short, is one of the RAF's busiest units. Formed in 2006, its 1,000 personnel have been deployed on every operation the RAF has taken part in since. The unit has personnel based in eight locations around the UK and several overseas, including with Carrier Strike Group 25, the largest military operation in a generation. Their work is far from simple, provide secure communications globally and protect them, whatever the cost. Uh, so 90 Signals Unit is the Air Force's cyber defence and deployable communications unit, and that's what we do. We have two core roles. The first one is to defend the RF from cyber attack, particularly from our most capable adversaries. And the other core role is to deploy information, communication systems around the world, and I really mean around the world. Communications have always been essential to warfare, that's not a new thing, but the pace of development and change has really picked up over the last 25 years, as you say. And now, you know, cyber defence and cyber offence is a core part of all militaries' roles in a way that it wasn't at the turn of the century. We joined personnel on a confirmation exercise designed to test the unit in an austere environment. It's an undisclosed location. Their task? Establish secure communications on an airfield that will soon receive RAF aircraft. So we're looking to test our ability to deploy at pace uh, in support of any potential NATO crises, for example. So it's, it's part of a broader transition towards a warfighting stance. Instead of the, the old Herrick style static campaign, we're looking to be able to deploy in an agile way, in good speed, uh, with all of our kit. And we're here to make sure we're able to do that. So we need to test ourselves, make sure our people are just as ready as our equipment to deploy move around at speed to deliver uh, if necessary. It's the sort of training that replicates the capability the unit provided in support of the efforts to recover the stricken F-35 in India. Well, we've come inside 90SU's hangar, which is massive, by the way, but it's actually designated a secret environment, which means when the doors are closed, the chain of command can pull everybody together and discuss sensitive topics like the threats posed by Russia. And Russia is a recurring theme. It's meant 90SU have pivoted away from being solely RAF focused in its work to supporting the whole of NATO. I think that gets to the heart of one of the key challenges facing us and that we're focused on as a unit today, and that's deterring Russia. Clearly 90SU on its own is not going to deter Russia, but we absolutely need to play our part in a defence response, but more importantly a NATO response. And for us that means every problem we try to solve, we have to try and think, what does that mean in a NATO context? This is the ops room. There are very sensitive activities going on in there. So sensitive, in fact, we've had to leave our electronic devices at the door, but we've been given permission to go in. Let's take a look. On these screens, the men and women are tracking the cyberspace surrounding current UK military operations in real time. Even the slightest variation from the norm across global networks is jumped upon and fully investigated. This is where the cyber domain meets the RAF's highly trained personnel and their sophisticated systems. It is, in effect, the cyber front line. So we have a 24-7 presence here to monitor the networks and uh, the different systems that are out on these operations. So essentially what we do here kind of enables all the communication on these different operations. And that's truly global, so you could be looking at systems that are on the other side of the planet. Yeah, so we have the ability to remote in and, and look at the different things going on across the world. But what's it like to serve in the unit? Personally, I mean, I've been to Cyprus, which I can't complain about. It's warm in the, in the uh, winter. Uh, I've been to Poland, and I've also been out to Crete on Rock Hard, which is a lot of fun. 
so I come from Raw Signals background, uh, so I'm on an exchange posting, so two years as a flight commander within 90SU. It's the same as any RAF flight lieutenant or flying officer would be doing, commanding, leading a, a flight of 60 personnel within the tactical communications wing. 90 Signals unit was my first unit when I joined the Air Force as a, as a young flying officer 20 something years ago, and to come back as the commander 20 years later is an absolutely fantastic privilege because there's nearly a thousand people whose sole remit in life, sole focus is the same and we're absolutely striving to get after high-end technology and apply that in a military context. Brilliant fun. The RAF is keen to shine a light on some of the non-flying opportunities that exist within its corner of defence. 90SU, with its intense focus on cyber and communications, says the roles it has available are not perfect for today's modern Gen Z generation. So, gamers, IT whiz kids, and those with an interest in cyber warfare, 90 Signals Unit might be right up your street. James Wharton, BFBS Forces News, RAF Leeming. Thanks for watching. For more from BFBS Forces News, like and subscribe to our channel.